I've been seeing a lot of both new and experienced commanders having issues with using the flak launcher. At first, I just wanted to make a video showcasing my preferred flak technique, along with some tips, but I quickly realized there's actually a lot of built-up knowledge to digest before you can really understand some of these methods. While much of the information herein can be found scattered around the AXI knowledge base, I wanted to compile all of these loose bits here in order to make a practical A to Z flak tutorial. I've added timestamps and links in the description so you can jump directly to the material that will help you the most. Before we shoot our flak, I think it's important to learn when and why the swarm fires its extremely threatening missiles. The swarm has two different states, standard and agitated. In the standard state, the swarm will only fire their inaccurate and low damage caustic shots. It's deployed in the standard state and will switch states after passing around your ship. Now, in its agitated state, the swarm gains the ability to fire Thargon missiles and will do so periodically if you're within 3 kilometers. Keep an eye on your distance and the swarm's formation as it will enter into unique missile formations when ready to fire. Purposely passing through an agitated swarm to switch it back to the standard state is commonly referred to as resetting the swarm. Knowing what state the swarm is in and how to switch it into the state you want is paramount for both flak and flaklets combat tactics. Now, the flak launcher itself is a very unique weapon in Elite Dangerous. You have to click and hold to fire a round and then release to detonate it. Hence, remote release flak launcher. Notice how each round has a tracking reticule with two parts, a circle and a triangle. The circle will fill up visually and with an audible tone as it nears your target. Watch and listen to this and be ready to release once the triangle flashes red. The triangle will flash red when anything enters the flak's blast radius. When you see or hear the triangle flash, release your firing button to detonate the flak round and destroy any Thargons in the blast radius. The window of timing you have to release the button will vary depending on how long the swarm is actually in the kill zone, so keep that in mind. Let's put it into practice with AXI's recommended basic flak technique, the reverse key. Boost in a straight line away from the interceptor until it's around 6 kilometers behind you. Then, turn FA off if it isn't already and flip around to face the Thargoid. Flak the swarm in this position, flipping around and boosting away again if the interceptor starts approaching its 3 kilometer main cannon range. Repeat this process until the swarm is completely destroyed. The good things about the reverse key is that it's extremely safe and simple to execute. However, it's inherently inaccurate due to the distance that you'll engage the swarm at, and you have to stop shooting flak to run away if the interceptor starts to catch up. Before the Titan Maelstrom update, you could reliably extend your range from the swarm to over 3.5 kilometers, forcing it into pursuit mode where it would chase you directly in a straight line at high speed. You could take advantage of this to make your flak shots at a distance much more accurate. However, with the update, Thargoid aggro behavior was changed, and now they will no longer chase you at such extreme ranges. When you drop off their radar at around 6 to 7 kilometers, they will recall the swarm, making those super long range reverse keys extremely difficult to maintain. However, you can abuse this swarm recall behavior to your benefit, which I'll explain later. You also probably noticed the swarm doesn't move directly at you the entire reverse key, so let's take a look at standard swarm movement behavior. Swarms have two distinct movement patterns based on your distance from them. At more than around 3.5 kilometers away, they will pursue you in a straight line at high speed. When you're within 3.5 kilometers, they'll slow down to their normal speed and begin an oscillating attack pattern. The closer you are to them, the less extreme this side-to-side -side movement is, so it can be beneficial to try getting closer if you're having difficulty aiming. Like interceptors, swarms will periodically break off during their attack patterns to rearm. Do not confuse this with being recalled. During a rearm, they will stay in their formation, while during a recall, they will break formation and head directly towards the interceptor. To effectively shoot down the swarm while it's in its oscillating attack pattern, you'll need both good aim and another layer of timing.
watch your lead indicator and take note of the peak of each swing. The peak is where the swarm changes directions and is therefore where it spends the most of its time and is the easiest to hit. Aim at where you think the peak will be, then fire as the lead indicator reaches that spot. The timing will slightly differ based on your range. Because the Basilisk is the fastest interceptor, it gives you the least amount of time to flack with the reverse key method, and if you continue to outrun it in a straight line, it will even overtake the swarm, putting itself between you and your flak target. To correct this and start another reverse key, you can instead boost directly past the Thargoid, turning on silent running when you're within 3 kilometers to avoid the interceptor's main cannon fire. Be mindful of your range after you make the pass, as you can easily boost far enough to lose the interceptor's aggro as it turns around. With that being said, the Basilisk is where I see many people give up on the Reversky method and flack entirely because they think it's way more trouble than it's worth. It takes so long, and having to constantly joss with the Basilisk to set up reverse keys just feels frustrating. Frankly, I agree with their assessment. So here's my preferred flak method. You'll want to establish a wide orbit with the Interceptor, ideally outside of its cannon range. Because the swarm can change directions much faster than the Interceptor, it will end up stuck in the middle of the orbit at a fairly constant range. This makes it an extremely easy target, and the close range means you spend less time waiting for the flak rounds to travel to the swarm, meaning you can fire more rounds in the same amount of time and dispatch the swarm much faster than the reverse key method. This technique is mildly risky, as mistakes can cause swarm agitations or taking fire from the interceptor. However, silent running can be used to mitigate the interceptor threat somewhat, and becoming proficient in this technique will allow you to flack ball and cone formations down in a matter of seconds. To deal with ring formations, offset your aim from the lead indicator by the radius of the swarm's ring. As you flack the ring down into a tighter formation, reduce your offset. Commander Orlando has a very in-depth guide on how to do this, so I will link his video in the description. If you are in a ship that can take advantage of spread out hardpoints to mount multiple flak launchers and gain more flak coverage, such as the Corvette, Cutter, or to even the Type 10, you can think of your hardpoints as having built-in offset. Practice with your specific ship for best results. I'm glossing over rings because flacking a ring formation is a common pain point and extremely ammo inefficient, so generally you'll want to re-roll the swarm into a cone or ball formation and flack that instead. Remember when I mentioned that you could abuse the swarm recall to your benefit during the reverse key? Formation re-rolling is that benefit. By re-rolling the swarm's formation, you can change your ring formation into a more palatable cone or ball, which can save you lots of flak ammo over the course of a fight. Here's how it's done. While in a reverse key maneuver, use silent running at any range above 3 kilometers. During this time, do not hit the interceptor with any weapons. Wait 4 seconds for the interceptor to lose aggro and recall its swarm. Then. Regain interceptor aggro by disengaging silent running or hitting the interceptor with your beam if needed. Do note that silent running isn't strictly necessary for rerolling to work, but it is useful to be 100% sure that your signature is minimal. Rerolling can save you the time and ammunition it takes to flack down a ring formation, but it may take multiple rolls to get a formation that you want. However, multiple rerolls can be done off of one reverse key maneuver if you are far away or quick enough. While rerolling is nice, it inevitably leads to the same frustrations as the normal reverse key. Because you are basically rolling dice to get the formation you want, it's possible to spend a minute or two just rerolling. This honestly kind of sucks. I'd much rather be shooting than pulling a lever on a slot machine. If only there was a way to force the swarm into a cluster formation that's easy to flag. Well, there is, 
and it's called the Pain Beaver. Named after the commander who discovered it, the Pain Beaver Maneuver is a curiosity of agitated swarm behavior where the swarm attempts to create a two kilometer distance before firing its missiles. By purposefully agitating the swarm and then chasing it to keep it within two kilometers, you can force it to flee in a straight line, making it an incredibly easy flag target. Take note how the triangle will light up when it reaches the tail end of the swarm, while the circle is still filling. Be patient and wait a moment until the circle completely fills to get a more complete detonation. This technique is extremely high risk reward, so user discretion is advised. Destroy the swarm as quickly as possible after agitating it, as it may try to return to the interceptor to refill its numbers, as seen here. While I was filming clips for this video, I learned something new. Old AX Knowledge said that swarms that were partially destroyed could be recalled by the interceptor for a refill at any time. While attempting to get footage of the refill, I would flack the swarm down to low numbers, and then I would wait. I attempted this multiple times and waited well past the enrage timer, never seeing a swarm refill until I agitated the swarm. It's possible that swarm behavior has changed, and now they will only attempt to refill if they are agitated first. And that's it! If you've made it this far, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something new. I find flacking swarms to be extremely fun, and it's definitely a big hit of dopamine when you get the swarm just right. If there's anything you should take away from this video, it's that you should practice. Practice flacking with a Xeno scanner to develop a good feel for the timing and aim, and find a technique that works best for you. Many thanks to the AXI community, and good hunting, commanders.